What is up everybody, Josh here again, and today we have a new Starfield video for you. Today we're going to be showing you skills. We'll be talking about skills and what skills you should probably take. Keep in mind that most skills are subjective, but let's get into it, shall we? The very first thing we'll mention about skills is the very first thing you have to deal with when it comes to skills, and that's going to be background. When you first choose your character and get past the initial mining cutscenes and whatnot, you'll go to background, and under background, you'll be able to choose what background you want. And the background will give you three skills right off the bat that you have a level one in. For example, Bounty Hunter, which is one of my favorite, will give you piloting, targeting control systems, and boost pack training, where a diplomat can get persuasion, commerce, and wellness. There are tons of options to choose from in your background after watching this video you may have a better idea of which ones to choose from you could be an industrialist and they give persuasion security and research methods which is a pretty good combination there's a lot of different combinations for a lot of different play styles here you're gonna have to choose what you want you could do soldier which is fitness ballistics and boost pack training what it boils down to is you could get a jump start on your skills based on what you choose on your background so choose wisely the next thing I'm mention is your crew these are the people that you hire to be on your ship or in your outposts and whatnot and they also have skills as well so keep that in mind that when they have those skills and they're assigned to something they can actually help a little bit with their skills and each follower has different skills and whatnot that they have to choose from but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go over the most important part which is you i'm going to go over the skills that we believe are the most important so the first thing we're going to show you is how to get to your personal skills very first thing you're going to do is hit tab when you're on PC, if it's something different, you'll have to look up the keybinds for that and your keybinds in settings. You also can go up to the very top right here and go to skills, and this will get you to skills. Also on desktop, you could just hit the P key by default, and it'll take you straight to skills. Gonna go over all five sections, which is physical, social, combat, science, and tech. Like I said, it's completely subjective, but there are some skills that will greatly help you and your travels in Starfield. I believe the very first one of those is stealth, and stealth is not too awful bad. The reason why is because it gives you a stealth meter. As long as you go with one rank, you can go up into higher ranks, and you can see you can go all the way up to 100% more difficult to detect while snaking, which is great. That means you basically won't be detected while sneaking. And suppressed weapons do 20% more attack damage, which is pretty nice. As with any skill, you have to progress through that skill. So for example, we've got the first rank here. We would have to do 10 sneak attacks and you'll see it once you click on the option here, rank two will be locked since we don't currently know it. So for example, with this rank two, you gotta sprint for 5,000 meters while at 75% or more of your maximum load capacity. So there are requirements for skills. You do have to start leveling up your skills as soon as you can. That is a very wise thing to do. But let's go back to stealth. So that stealth bar, let's show you that. So with the stealth bar, you'll see at the very top of your screen where you're hidden, we do have a piece of armor that has chameleon on it. Chameleon is actually a very, very nice piece to have on a piece of armor. It'll give you the chance to become invisible when you're not moving. So when you have the stealth bar at the very top of your screen, whenever you're moving, you'll see that your hidden will go away. Of course, when you get detected or something sees you, like so, you'll see danger. And now our danger bar is going down and we're cautioned because we're hidden. So the stealth bar is really nice for you to be able to stay hidden from things. And if you ask me another great skill is weightlifting. Being able to carry more things is amazing. You can carry up to 100 more kilograms at rank four of weightlifting. And you also gain resistance to stagger. Stagger is pretty nice to resist because once you stagger, you're pretty much not able to do anything. So for example, our weight here is like 210 and this is with items. We also have some pieces of armor or packs that have carry capacity on them as well. But being able to carry a lot of stuff before you're encumbered is great because once you get encumbered, you'll notice that your stamina gets depleted quite quickly because you are using more oxygen while encumbered. And it does give you a little notification in the top right of the screen saying that you are encumbered until you get these special powers to be able to, you know, get great oxygen quickly. 
I wouldn't say that wellness is one of those that I would suggest, but I'm probably going to go into it a little bit more. HP seems to be great. Doesn't seem like I have a lot of problems with HP, but yeah, we could go into wellness, I think, later on in the game. As stated, a lot of these skills are based on what you prefer. So if you prefer to do boxing, which means you're mostly unarmed attacks and stuff like that, you're going to go into boxing. If you want to do fitness, you can do more oxygen. I don't know if I'd ever do more oxygen, to be honest with you, but that's completely up to you. The only other skill I say that I might consider taking later down the road, and this is kind of early because we are kind of early in the game still. We're trying not to rush the content as quick as possible. Sounds like it's a really good skill, to be honest. Regenerate health even faster outside of combat, and you now regenerate health quickly while in combat. Regenerating health inside and outside of combat sounds like a win-win to me. You use a lot less health packs that way. And of course, as we mentioned, concealment at rank three will give you chameleon, which is basically the invisibility you seen just a few minutes ago. We have that with armor and don't even have to go into it with skills. But if you wanted to go in with skills, this is where you'd get it at. So concealment, if you're looking for like a stealthy build, for sure. Used by assassins, special force operatives, and simple thieves alike for centuries. And it's pretty much all I'm going to say for physical. Physical is not one of my favorite categories in this game, but to each their own. But we're going to move on to social. Now, this begins one of my favorite things. Absolutely love doing commerce. Commerce all the way up to level four. And the reason why is because you could buy and sell for less or more. So buy 20% less and sell for 25% more, which is really nice. You buy and sell a lot of stuff in this game, and you definitely need credits for sure. This comes into play, especially when you start you repairing with? your ship and okay. upgrading and putting parts on your ship can cost quite a bit of money and you do need quite a bit of credits to do so commerce is a very good thing and as with most skills sometimes you get a special dialogue option like for example this one says commerce and you'll see it pop up in parentheses in your dialogue choices one of my absolute favorites in social besides commerce fun to actually be able to persuade somebody more so if you go up to rank four you're up to 50 percent chance to increase persuading somebody when you're talking to them and the really good thing about persuasion is that you can sit there and persuade about anybody with a higher chance and pretty much will get what you'd want done quicker. Another fun one, I believe, is theft, and theft will give you the ability to pickpocket people or targets, and you can get it all the way up to 50% chance to successfully pickpocket and get their holstered item if you wanted. And all you got to do is go up to somebody, look at your bar up top, make sure you're hidden, and then pickpocket. Like so. But as you can see, I can't take his weapon because I don't have it leveled up all the way. There's a little detected icon that you see at the very top of the looting in case you get detected while you're looting. Another honorable mention is leadership, which at rank two will give you more health for your companions and 50 kilograms more carrying capacity, which is really nice. And also at rank three, you could have them heal you occasionally. Another one is bribery, which gives you the new bribery and speech challenges. So you're able to bribe people and at higher levels, it reduces the amount that the bribery would cost. And at rank four, sometimes it may not cost money at all. Also, if you're really big into outposts, you could do outpost management. And I'm going to have our next video. It's going to be about how to farm XP and credits super fast and easy. Another great one to have once you get to that level would be ship command. Ship command will give you the option to put more crew active on your ships. Moving on to combat. Combat's going to be one of those sections where if you use that certain weapon, you need to go into it. Whatever you prefer using, you want to go into for your combat. If you use rifles a lot, go into the rifle certification. If you use heavy weapons a lot, go into heavy weapons. I use bolts or ballistic weapons a lot in this game just because I prefer it. For me personally, weapon reloading is going to be something I go into once I have the points to do so for the ballistic weapons reloading 30% faster. This is pretty cool. Marksmanship will give you critical hit chance up to 15% rank right? and double damage at rank four. Targeting is also a good one to go into where they will automatically mark enemies that's shooting at you. So if you didn't actually see the direction that that bolt was coming from, you'll at least be able to see the enemy now. Of course, at rank four, it can go up to four enemies. Also, armor penetration. Most enemies are going to be wearing armor, human enemies at least. And if that attacker has a lot of armor and you can ignore up to 50% at rank three, that's pretty good. Like I said, combat's just one of them categories where you kind of got to choose what you want to choose. And the reason why is because everybody has different play styles and everybody likes different weapons. I went a lot into science because for science. 
Science has some very interesting things that you may want to check out. I think absolutely one of the best ones you could choose in science is going to be medicine, and that's for the healing. So the higher the rank you have in medicine, the more you heal and faster. I use med packs and trauma packs quite often in this game, and I have them keybound as well. You'll see that I took research methods. The reason why is because I am currently working on a video for crafting to get XP and credits. So that is the reason why I took it, just to kind of reduce the amount that you actually have to pay per crafted items and complete research projects is reduced by 10%. Later on in the game, spacesuit design and weapon engineering definitely comes into play as far as crafting improved mods and whatnot for your spacesuits. Same thing goes for weapon whenever you can craft superior weapon mods. Going up to a weapon bench or spacesuit bench, you can click on the item that you want to modify and you can slot out or modify those items. For example, ballistic shielding on this piece of armor, we can upgrade it and put some ballistic shielding on it. You could get better mods the higher rank you go. And that includes the weapon bench as well. My next favorite in science is going to be scanning. Scanning is completely underrated if you ask me. Let's take a look at the ranks here. For you can detect unique and organic resources on planet and moon surfaces and gain a complete list of ship cargoes in space. Rank 3 giving you exotic and rank 2 giving you rare. The information about ship cargo is really good. The ability to be able to scan cargo holds of ships that are far away. For example, we're going to go ahead and select this one right here and hit E after we hit F and bring up our scanner. We can see a complete list of what this ship has. And this is really great for pirating, especially if you're wanting to go and kind of find what you need. Look at this transpo. It has all kinds of resources on it. It's very juicy. We're here at my favorite planet for outposts, and we're at Bessel 3B in the Bessel system. And this is a moon, and we're going to show you how much resources we can see here. We can see every single rare resource here. You see cobalt, platinum, and neon. And all those are showing up on the scan. We can see exactly where they are. So scanning is really, really nice, to be honest with you. We can also see the platinum there. And, for example, cobalt there. So for sure, later on in the game, when you start doing outposts, or if you are a pirate and you do pirating a lot and you want to see what that ship has before you actually take it down, or you can just mow through everything, I guess, uh, you could do that for scanning. Same thing goes for outpost engineering. Once you get later on in outpost engineering, you want to go into this once you get the points and you can research and construct cutting edge outpost modules and stuff. And there's tons of things that you can craft for your outposts with the advanced outpost engineering. You can research decorations and all kinds of stuff. Honorable mention is going to be special projects. It's pretty good for crafting unique manufacturer components at level four and of course exotic and rare ones at three and two. Also planetary habitation is going to be one that I'm going to suggest because I have a large amount of outposts right now, but you can also build on kind of more hostile planets or deep freeze or inferno planets. For example, with this one, you could build on planets with extreme pressure at rank two and at rank three, you could build on toxic or corrosive environments. And level four, you can build outposts on planets with extreme gravity. And something that I'll probably end up going to later on is increasing your unit of power for your ship's reactor by up to five at rank four. 100%. I'm going to definitely do this. I'm going to move over to tech section, probably one of my favorite in this whole game. There's some in here that you absolutely, I think, need. And one of that is going to be boost pack training. If you haven't leveled into boost pack training and have a boost pack, what are you doing? I mean, honestly, it's one of the greatest things, I think, in this game to be able to boost pack. And once you get up to rank four, you'll see that not only does your boost pack fuel regenerate more quickly, but it does it double the speed. So what this means is if you're on certain planets, for example, this one right here is Zemeka, and it is one of those planets that have very low gravity. And I literally don't have to even touch the ground. <laughs> you can sit there and jetpack forever and never have to worry about how fast you're going. Now, if you want to go fast, you want to make sure you're running and then jetpack, you'll get your full speed like this right here. But as you can see at level four, you could pretty much go anywhere you want, go as high as you want. Your jetpack regenerates a ton. And you could cross gaps like this. You could get to special areas like this. It's easier to do your main quests where you got a jetpack around and collect things. It's so nice. 
And can also use it to get away from enemies. Kind of like this. Get on top of stuff like trees or rocks or whatever you want. So absolutely 100% big pack. That's a requirement, I think, with this game mostly. And of course, you can use the jump as long as you have a boost pack or a pack that actually lets you be able to boost. It will sometimes say basic pack. That usually doesn't mean that you can boost pack from that. You have to have an actual pack that can boost. And it will say in the very bottom, boost pack. The next one I honestly believe is another requirement, and this is a requirement if you really want to actually have really nice ships or big ships in the future. Piloting will let you unlock the ability to have class B and C ships, and you can also utilize thrusters at rank 1 and at rank 2 you get increased turning rate and maneuverability, which is great for dogfights. So the higher rank you can get in piloting, the better. Another one that I highly suggest, but it's not necessary, is security. Security lets you get into advanced locks at rank 1, expert locks at rank 2, and you can slot auto tries. And at rank 3, you can get master level locks and have four auto attempts that can be banked. At rank 4, you can eliminate the possibility for keys that weren't in the puzzle to begin with and have five auto attempts. I'm not going to actually personally go rank 4, and the reason why is because dizzy picks are quite easy to actually use. And being able to get into master locks, like here in the very bottom of the lodge, there's a whole entire Mark 1 suit. Digipicks are really easy to use as well. If you click on whichever Digipick you want or cycle through on other consoles, you can actually line stuff up. For example, we'll line this one up, and then we'll just switch over to another one and try to line it up. And as you can see, with both of those, now we're going to be able to get into that lock. And then lock it in and get into one of the best early suits that you can find in the game so yeah lock picking is very valuable which i don't actually need so i'm just gonna just gonna close the door and there's tons of things to get into in this game so there's tons of lock sections of outposts and facilities that have places you can get into that you need security to be able to get into it also another not necessarily required but it is really nice to have is targeting control systems if you have targeting control systems it's a lot easier to lock on to targets while fighting also in rank two you'll get reduced rate of locked on ships by 15 percent so it takes 15 percent less time to lock onto an enemy ship and target lock ships will fire at you 25 percent slower at rank four the time is reduced by a whopping 60%, and you have a 20% increased system damage in targeting mode. But it means you do a 20% more damage and 60% faster to lock onto ships. Even the, if you were just to take the very first rank, which unlocks ships targeting functionality. Oh look, and we have somebody who has just graciously decided to show up and let us demonstrate that. The lock on is quite quick with just the rank one. As you can see here, we can hit R now and lock onto this ship and just completely destroy the thing. I love rail guns in this game. It's actually quite nice. We're gonna get close enough to lock again. And we're gonna lock onto the ship now. We're gonna just go ahead and try to target one of their systems here. Let's go for their engines. And now they don't have engines. Or or a ship, actually. Nice. So targeting onto ships is quite valuable, and once you get it at a higher rank. You can unlock better abilities and lock on faster. So this is really, really nice, especially if you're trying to take over as many ships as you want or take over a very valuable ship. You need to target a certain area on the ship. You can target it quite fast and do additional damage to the system. Now down the side here, you're gonna notice you have ballistic, energy, particle beam, automated weapons, which you do end up getting, and missile weapon systems. These are all different types of weapons in the game. Personally, I love energy weapons, so I'm going with energy currently. So you need to choose whichever one that you're going into or you decide to use the most out of the two or three. Engine systems is something I may consider going into later, which increases your ship speed, but currently I'm not going to go into it until later. 
till I have points to spend and nowhere to put them. I'm going to say that payloads is probably a pretty important one. You spend a lot of time carrying stuff to places and things, and you need space to do that. So having more ship cargo hold capacity is great, especially if you increase your capacity by 50%. That scales. It's really nice. Some other great honorable mentions in this category is boost assault training once you get to that level. If you look at this rank four while hovering, time slows down and the world moves 70% slower around you. And if you look at rank three, if you aim down the sights, you hover in place until your fuel's empty, of course. Another one that I'm going to go into is 100% starship engineering. Repairing your systems faster after you get into a dogfight would be amazing. And if you're wanting to do some special customizations to your ship, you can go into starship design, which allows for the installation of improved ship modules. So you definitely want to go into this if you want to have one of the best ships in the game and allows for customization on the ship. And when you go to build things in the ship builder, you'll notice that some items like this one right here in the bottom left, it'll say starship design required for it and what rank it's required. And some of these are the higher skills, but these are awesome pieces that you can upgrade your ship with, especially at rank four. Of course, if you're wondering how we got to that, we just went to our ship builder here at our base, our little outpost here we call home. And that's really it for skills, everyone. We just kind of wanted to go over the skills briefly and explain which ones we feel were ones that are completely necessary. I think commerce is one that people should absolutely take. Persuasion, super fun. At least one and stealth. Choose whatever combat spec that you're wanting to go into. Arg, if you be a pirate, go into scanning. Security, so you can get some really nice stuff. Security, 100%. One thing we did forget was shield systems too. Shield systems is really nice increases the resistancy of your shields get that up to rank four as quick as you can sometimes your shields will occasionally resist 100 of all damage received and if not at rank three you'll get a 60 percent increase in shield capacity boost pack 100 i would not skip over this and also piloting go ahead and start working on it early if you want to have the really large ships like i said they are all subjective if there's a skill here that hasn't been mentioned and you want to mention it don't forget to comment down below what your favorite skills are in the game and that's it for this video don't forget if you like what you see to like comment and subscribe to the channel subscribing will get you starfield videos just like this one and updates when those come out and hopefully we'll see you next time peace